हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू द फर्स्ट लेक्चर फॉर द कोर्स डिज़ाइन फॉर सस्टेनेबिलिटी सो द कोर्स विल बी डिवाइडेड इन टू कपल ऑफ मॉड्यूल्स एंड ईच मॉड्यूल विल डिस्कस सर्टन कंटेंट्स सो इन दिस फर्स्ट मॉड्यूल वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इज वॉट इज़ अनसस्टेनेबिलिटी सो बिफोर ट्राइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट सस्टेनेबिलिटी इज इट इज़ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट आर द अनसस्टेनेबिलिटीज एंड why do we actually need to move towards sustainability in the next lecture we will discuss about definition of sustainability and that of sustainable development thereafter the third lecture of this module will consist of on how do we achieve this through design so coming to the first topic what is unsustainable let's discuss this through some examples so all of us regard this as a very unsustainable solution because these fossil fuel run vehicles they emit lot of air pollution which is damaging to the environment it also causes us many different health hazards why do we call this uh, particular solution as unsustainable there are two reasons reason one we can't continue at the rate at which we are polluting the environment at this point of time it's causing more and more health hazards so we cannot continue at the rate at which we are polluting the environment secondly fossil fuels these vehicles are run on fossil fuels fossil fuels are a non renewable source of energy so we are using them at a rate much faster than what it can be naturally replenished so we are using more of something than can be replaced naturally so something becomes unsustainable when we are not going to be able to continue at the rate at which we are doing it right now now let's look at some other examples of transportation before going into the other examples let's go back to our previous example cars are a really good innovation it can move us from point a to point b and the distance between point a and point b quite be pretty large we cannot dispense our activity of moving from point a to point b now coming to this another solution of transportation this can also move us from point a to point b Yes for sure the point A to point B cannot be very far away they have to be pretty near to each other when someone is operating this cycle rickshaw there is no pollution happening because this runs on a human being's power it does not run on any kind of fossil fuel or any other source of energy so environmentally it is non polluting while it is in the operational phase i'm not talking about the manufacturing phase of this cycle rickshaw i'm only talking about the phase in which we are using it so it is environmentally sustainable but now tell me as a consumer you cannot use this from you know, traveling for 10 kilometers so is this a solution which is environmentally sustainable a good solution for me as a consumer i don't think so of course for short distances it is but not for large distances it cannot replace cars now think about this cycle rickshaw puller is it a very economical solution for him is it a very comfortable way of earning money so what i am trying to talk about is the social sustainability of this rickshaw puller the economic sustainability of this rickshaw puller so although a transportation medium as a cycle rickshaw is very sustainable environmentally but that does not ensure that it will be socially and economically sustainable another transportation medium again this cannot take us over large distances yes in cold countries or in countries with more flat roads this can be a means of transportation which which can be used for much larger distances as compared to what it can be used in climate like ours which is hot so now what is the problem this is again a very environmental friendly solution so the bicycle sharing system that i am showing you is system it is called as bixi cycle sharing system it is from montreal so i'm not talking specifically in terms of this cycle solution but in general any bicycle sharing system like this so environmentally very sustainable solution also i am not owning this bicycle so each one of us if we try to own bicycle we are consuming lot of materials which are used to make this bicycle now this is a shared system so 
I do not own. So, lesser number of bicycles will be required to serve a particular size of population than in case everybody has to own a bicycle. So, environmentally sustainable while running it, environmentally also less polluting because it is a sharing system. Now, as I spoke in a hot climate, will you be able to ride it? So, it might not be a very acceptable solution. Now, imagine riding this bicycle on our city roads which are extremely polluted and you are exposed to this pollution for such a long, long time. Will you want to do it or will I say that it is a healthy option to do it? What happens to our traffic situation? All of us know that our traffic situation on the roads is pretty bad. So, in such traffic situation, is it even safe to ride these bicycles given the fact that we do not have dedicated bicycle lanes on our roads? So, not necessarily something which is environmentally sustainable is sustainable because it might not be socially sustainable, it might not be economically sustainable. Now, coming to this particular uh, method of transportation the CNG run auto rickshaws. So, they can take you for a long distance. So, the long distance travel problem is resolved because when CNG vehicles are running they do not emit any visible smoke. So, it was assumed that they are a very clean source of uh, energy for running our vehicles. So, a large number of our cities went towards mandating that all public transportation which is like city buses as well as auto rickshaws be run using CNG. Of course, because we were not seeing any smoke coming out of it. There is no um, not much apparent social and economic troubles also associated with this in kind of transportation. But more recently uh, CSIR labs of the country figured out that when you are running a CNG vehicle it releases carbon nanoparticles. Now, these carbon nanoparticles you cannot see them, but they are a big time carcinogenics. So, a solution which might seem to be sustainable at a given point of time, at a later point of time you might figure out that it is not so sustainable. Just because your technological know-how regarding that particular um, technology improved. So, we will discuss more about this particular aspect of unsustainability in the next lecture coming up. Coming to this another mode of transportation, metros runs on electricity. So, of course, they do not emit any pollution while they are running because they are using electricity. They can also carry a large number of people over a large distance. They also make our cities less traffic congested. Great solution, but how is this electricity produced in our country? It is produced by burning coal in our thermal power stations and when we burn coal we are producing lot of pollution or otherwise you can construct hydroelectric projects. So, where you build big dams and produce this electricity. Dams change the local ecology of the place. In many places uh, uh, floods or droughts are being uh, blamed upon the construct large scale construction of dams it also displaces lots and lots of people. So, you can see that uh, hydro power plants have environmental problems, social problems as well as economic problems when we speak in terms of sustainability. What do we gather from here? So, it is not only the product at the usage phase. When we are talking about sustainability, we have to consider the entire life cycle of a product or a service. What do I mean by an entire life cycle is starting from the raw material extraction. So, say for example, for making this train body I might need steel, I might need aluminum, I might need different kinds of plastic and so on. So, I would need to extract these raw materials. So, what are the um, uh, sustainabilities or unsustainabilities involved when I am um, uh, extracting these raw material? that is my stage 1. Second stage is I will put all these raw materials together and make this final product. So, which is the production phase. The third phase is 
when from this uh, place where this crane has been made i have to transport it to the place where it will be finally used so which is the distribution phase so all the sustainabilities and unsustainabilities involved during the distribution phase then comes the usage phase and finally when the strain is no longer useful either i will have to scrap it or recycle some parts of it to make use of it for something else so that is the end of life stage so whenever i am talking about sustainability i have to consider a particular product or service across its entire life cycle so that i can clearly say whether it is sustainable or unsustainable and what are the pointers at which it is unsustainable i will give few more examples to explain you when it is the usage phase which is the most polluting and when it is the production phase which is most polluting say for example in this case of this metro train the amount of uh, uh, energy spent the amount of pollution caused during the time it is manufactured is way much more lower than during its usage phase because this train might have a usage time spread over around 20 to 30 years so the impact at the usage phase is way much larger than it is at the manufacturing phase consider this other means of transportation this is a means of transportation which runs on solar energy great solution because it's solar energy so once my solar panels are on they are virtually costing me nothing to uh, produce energy and run this vehicle this vehicle of course does not have any emissions because it's running on solar energy but what happens to the battery due to the current battery technology the current battery technology is not environmentally friendly so although the energy source in this case was very environment friendly but the battery is making it unsustainable at a certain point of time so in our previous slide we were discussing about considering a product or service over its entire life cycle and analyzing the sustainabilities and unsustainabilities at various stages and what we are talking about in this particular slide is it's not only about the life stages but it's also about the different components that are going into a particular product so some of the components might have a problem and we would re require to redesign those components so that we can achieve better sustainability also from these examples what you can see is sustainability is not an absolute concept so none of these vehicles are actually truly sustainable so one might be more sustainable than the other in a given uh, context say a bicycling might be a very sustainable solution as compared to other means of transportation when i have to travel across a small distance uh, similarly a metro might come out to be a more sustainable solution when i have to travel over a large distance and i can carry a large number of people together so my impact which is being caused because of this metro is distributed over a large usage period and over a large number of people which means large number of use cases so uh, most of the times you will see advertisements which say this is a very eco friendly product it is not a right statement to make nothing is absolutely eco friendly or absolutely sustainable it is only more eco friendly or sustainable than other competing solutions in a given context i will explain this better with these three examples so the first one is a earthen pot it is made by baking uh, clay wet clay pots the uh, white uh, product that you see on the uh, so this the white product that you see over here is a paper cup again it's a disposable paper cup so that your hot coffee or tea does not crumble the paper cup inside the paper cup i have a so on this particular surface i have a 
lining of a very thin lining of plastic. Coming to this particular um, uh, solution, these are again disposable plastic cups. Common sense says that the first solution that is the cooler or the earthen pot is the most sustainable solution or the most eco-friendly solution. This is a complete myth, it is a misunderstanding of uh, the whole concept of eco-friendliness or uh, sustainability. Why so? As soon as you bake clay, baked clay is ceramic, it is no longer clay. So, you can break it down into smaller and smaller pieces and those you can also make it into a powder, but that is still ceramic, it is not clay. So, it is not biodegradable, no crops can grow in that particular powder. That is why we can unearth earthen pots from as um, uh, olden times as the Harappan uh, culture, because they do not biodegrade. So, when you make a earthen pot for drinking tea once, all of us know that we might be using this earthen pot only for 2 to 3 minutes till I finish my tea. So, for making this earthen pot which is non biodegradable, I uh, have to burn this uh, pot to create uh, these uh, baked clay plot and I am using biomass to burn these uh, clay pots. So, just imagine the amount of biomass I burn, the amount of pollution that I mm, create for this very small one time usage of couple of minutes for this particular cup. If this cup was mm, not meant to be disposable, but if I bring this cup home and I am going to drink tea or coffee out of it again and again, in that case, the unsustainabilities in the manufacturing phase still remain. It is, is, we are still burning biomass, we are still creating lot of pollution, but the pollution created over there gets distributed over many usages when I am using it at home for many many times. So, my ultimate impact goes down, of course impact is not zero, but impact can go down. But when I am using it in a scenario like offering tea in railway stations or such kind of a context, this is a completely environmentally unfriendly solution to go ahead with. Now coming to the paper cup with the plastic lining, again a disposable mm, cup, this cup can be used for serving tea and coffee in railway stations or other such mm, contexts. Uh, because of the plastic lining inside it, I cannot send this, uh, pla uh, this uh, paper cup to a paper recycling facility, because there is no way I can remove that plastic layer from the paper. So, mm, uh, this has to go into a mm, landfill. Under uh, the right kind of such conditions, after a few months, the paper will biodegrade and the plastic will still remain. Because it is a very very thin film of plastic, I will have this thin film of plastic lying in the environment for a very very long time and it will degrade after that, which this time runs into couple of thousand years. So, you can see in this particular case, the paper cup with the plastic, I cannot use them at home or in any situation where I can keep on reusing them, because the nature of the material does not allow that kind of a usage. It can be used only once and then the, if you pour more and more uh, hot coffee or tea, after a point of time, it will start leaking. Now, coming to the third solution, which is a purely plastic cup and it is a disposable plastic cup. The problem again lies over here, this is lot of plastic biomass as compared to the previous solution where I had a very thin film of plastic. This plastic when goes to a landfill, it will take this extremely long period of thousands of years to degrade in the landfill. This plastic cup, if we have a way in which I can collect them back, clean them, dry them, I can again pulverize them and use uh, that particular plastic for other purposes. This plastic can no longer use for food grade purposes, but it can be used for other kind of purposes, but that is only possible if I have a collection system, otherwise not. 
So from these three examples, you can see that sustainability as a concept, so uh, none of these solutions is absolutely sustainable. All of these solutions have relative degree of unsustainabilities depending on the kind of usage scenario that I put them on. Now tell me, I can also replace these cups with say a uh, steel cup or a glass cup and serve tea in this uh, railway stations or such kind of situations. In that particular case, I might have to consider that what is the amount of pollution I am causing because of the detergent and water that is required for cleaning them after each use. But tell me, although that is a very sustainable solution, imagine a tea vendor who has to travel along the Indian railways from one coast to another selling tea. Will this person be ready to carry all these reusable cups made up of say steel or glass or ceramic and serve tea? Because now this person once goes serving tea, then has to come back, collect all these cups, the weight involved is also pretty much high. There is also chances that there are people might steal them, people might break them. So the person might end up losing lot of these cups also. So do you think although that might be a more environmentally friendly solution, will people want to accept that more sustainable solution? The vendor, will that person accept? Will it be economically sustainable for that person to take that solution? Maybe not. So from these discussions we can see that whenever we are talking about sustainability, sustainability is to be seen not only on the environment, uh, environmental dimension. We have to look at sustainability from the social, economic as well as the environmental dimension. So how does it go ahead? So say for example, something is socially sustainable and economically sustainable. We call it as an equitable solution. Something which is socially sustainable and environmentally sustainable, we call it as a bearable solution. Something which is economically sustainable and environmentally sustainable, we call it as a viable solution. Only when something is sustainable on social, economic and environmental aspects, all the three aspects, we call it as a sustainable solution. So I will give you some examples which will make it more clear. So for example, growing crops using chemical fertilizers and pesticides have given rise to a bumper crop production. So you must be aware of the green revolution that happened in our country. So usage of fertilizers, pesticides, machinery for doing farming helped to increase the farm output in our country to a large extent. As a result, we could achieve food security. So we could, so the, since we achieve food security, we could give farmers better income. So we had got a socially good, it's a socially sustainable solution, it's an economically sustainable solution. But fertilizers and pesticides, all of us know, have caused lot of environmental damages. So it was not environmentally sustainable at that point of time. So it was an equitable solution because it was a socially sustainable and economically sustainable solution. Now over the decades when we have kept on practicing agriculture using these environmentally challenging methods like fertilizers, pesticides, machinery pumping out lot of water from the underground. Our river sources have got polluted. Our food is polluted, which is causing us lot of health hazards. Our soil's fertility has reduced. The water level has reduced so drastically that now I have to spend so much more money to draw water. So it is uh, estimated that around, uh, due to these environmental damages which has been, uh, which has occurred since the last couple of deep decades, the um, uh, input cost of growing 1 kg of rice has increased from somewhere between 20 rupees to 30 rupees per kg. 
So now you can see now there is a reverse impact because of this environmental unsustainability. There are a lot of farmers who's, uh, who are going into debt because, if, uh, they, uh, because the input costs are higher so they have to take loans to farm their uh, farm, uh, farms. If the crop fails, then they have a lot of debt. So there is economic unsustainability. Also it has because of the uh, uh, bad impact on the health of eating those kind of food or even the bad impact due to uh, the change in the social fabric of the agronomic societies. Uh, there is a lot of social unsustainabilities which are coming up. So since this uh, solution was at the equitable stage that is socially and economically sustainable and was not environmentally sustainable we can see that there is a backfire which is happening the economic and social sustainability is also now getting damaged now let's consider another example say organic farming is good for the environment and for the health of the consumers so i can say it is socially mm, uh, sustainable it is environmentally sustainable so it's a bearable solution now the current ways of producing by using organic farming techniques the production volumes are mm, relatively lower so if supply of food grains reduces in the market and the demand stays high because of because our population remains the same so the price of products will go very high so there will not be economic sustainability which will in turn damage our social and environmental sustainability eventually. Say for example services like Uber, they are very economical alternative to mm, uh, go over long distances. They are also economical in the sense that I do not need to purchase a car. I do not need to mm, uh, have a space to keep that car in my house or in my office. Parking space is expensive. Whenever I need a car, I can book a car. So economically, it is a great solution. Environmentally, I would say it's a great solution, of course, because if I personally buy a car and I use that car only for an hour or two in a day, that huge amount of material that has been consumed for my car lies unused for most part of the day. But if it's a system like Uber, the car gets more and more used. I also produce lesser number of cars. I have less traffic congestions because I have lesser number of cars on the road. So environmentally also it's a good solution as compared to owning cars. You will see it is always like better solution as compared to something else. Nothing is like best solution. But there are a lot of protests going on by different groups in different parts of the world against Uber. Why these protests? These Uber drivers are not owned by the, they are not the employees of the company. The nature of the contract that they have with the company, the drivers realize that they do not have much social security out of this particular job. So they are demanding more social security out of the job. So this is an example where I have an economically sustainable solution, an environmentally sustainable solution, which is like a viable solution. But because of the social unsustainabilities, it might disrupt the solution in a longer run if it has to continue in this particular fashion. Hence, Sustainability is always achieved only at the confluence of these three dimensions that is social, economic and environmental. This particular diagram which I am showing you, it might be misleading that the contribution of all these three dimensions is equal. But that is not the case. Depending on a context, one particular dimension might have a way much more bigger impact than the other dimension. So when we go into our uh, uh, next modules, the module on product service system design, we will talk more about how do we assign different weightages to different dimensions depending on the design context in hand. There are many other representations of this dimensions of sustainability. So if you see this particular uh, representation, 
what this representation means that the economic dimension is at the core then comes the social dimension then comes the environmental dimension so your economic sustainability has the biggest importance uh, which is uh, encompassed by the social dimension and thereafter by the environmental dimension usually it has been seen that if a um, solution is not economically viable it becomes unacceptable for people for a long run governments or charities might fund them for fund such initiatives for certain period of time but it cannot be long run at a long um, for a long period of time another reason why we have unsustainabilities is about consumption pattern for example the air conditioners from um, past decades used to consume lot of energy so the running cost of air conditioners used to be very high so lesser and lesser people were interested in buying air conditioners because the running cost of an air conditioner is very high now the industry has moved towards star rated electronic products so i can buy a five star rated um, air conditioner the initial cost might be higher than buying a three star rated um, air conditioner but the running costs are way much more lower even a three star air conditioner of today consumes way much lesser energy than what used to be couple of decades back now this is a great environmental sustainability brought in that the industry is moved towards making more energy efficient air conditioners so we brought in sustainability on the production side now sustainability on the production side what it had an impact on the consumption side now since my recurring expenditure on air conditioners reduced more and more people went ahead and bought air conditioners so the number of air conditioners um, working in the um, whole world increased exponentially so the amount of energy that i might have saved because my machine became more um, uh, environmental friendly that is being offset because the number of machines have increased a lot so many a times it has been observed that if the industry moves towards more efficient production processes that does not imply that you will get real sustainability impact it is more about the consumption pattern so if we consume more if we keep on consuming more even if our machines are very efficient we still uh, bring in lots of unsustainabilities now coming to the next topic of today's lecture is why do we need to move towards sustainability what is it that is compelling us or it compels you all who are the future designers and engineers to learn about sustainability to practice sustainability in all their design activities so research shows you can see the first image versus the second image it shows the sea ice extension decrease from 1980 to 2012 we keep on hearing about these uh, increase in uh, level of the sea and the melting of the polar ice caps in news every now and then so the sea level in, uh, increase is expected to be around 0.8 meters which means a large part of our globe will be under the sea so our habitat is gone a report on energy and air pollution it tells us that every year 6.5 million people die because of all sorts of air pollution which might be caused by fine particles ozone nox and so on just imagine 6.5 million people these were the numbers which we would we were losing during world wars fao is food and agriculture organization they do a lot of research on the food and agriculture scenario of the globe according to their research from 2014 onwards the number of undernourished people in the globe is on the rise which means we are having lesser food production 
this is another research which says if you if all of us on this earth were supposed to live the way australians live we would require 5.2 earths if we were to live like if all of us were to live like people living in usa we would require 5 earths so if you go down the last one is india it says if we all live like indians live we would require 0.6 earths for the global thing it's like the currently the way all of us are living we require 1.7 earths so the amount of material energy that we are consuming we require 1.7 earth of course we do not have that extra 0.7 earth another research says that by 2050 all industrialized contexts so i'm not talking about developed countries or uh, developing countries i'm talking about industrialized contexts so say in india we might have some contexts where which are not very industrialized there are other places which are highly industrialized so i'm talking about all the industrialized contexts not in terms of developed or underdeveloped or developing so according to this research by 2050 production and consumption systems in industry industrialized contexts should use about 90 percent less resources than they are doing today just imagine how do we achieve that so that is the challenge in front of all the current and the future designers and engineers so that's why we are going to do this course to try to understand how do we bring in sustainability greater sustainability than what we are doing right now so to summarize today's lecture point one is sustainability is achieved when a when a solution is sustainable simultaneously on the dimensions of social economic and environmental the impact of each of these dimensions might not be same for a given context they might vary so if one dimension might be more important than another dimension unsustainabilities have to be looked for in a product or service over the entire life cycle of it that is from raw material production to production of the final products and services to distribution of the products and services usage of the production uh, products and services and end of life of the products and services also unsustainability have to be looked for in a product or service over each and every component of it unsustainability is caused due to the way we consume something so we have to also consider what is the consumption pattern in case we have to work on designing for sustainability an environmentally friendly solution might not be acceptable to the e-users if it is not convenient to use it so many of our environment friendly or sustainable solutions actually do not work just because of the fact that it is not very convenient to use so the users will not use a more friendly solution if it is not more convenient if it is not affordable certain products are more harmful during production while others during usage phase or disposal phase there are mathematical ways of computing uh, in which phase a product uh, has what kind of impact so in our second module we will go through certain strategies and tools which help us in giving numbers to this impact so when in today's lecture i was trying to compare a earthen pot versus a paper plastic cup versus a plastic cup i was talking in terms of only the different impact the different stages and the different impacts i could have i was not talking in terms of numbers but there are also um, uh, softwares available which helps you to figure out the exact impact the carbon dioxide emission or uh, the acidification caused because of a particular activity so we can get the actual impacts and then compare between solutions for a given context and say which one is more sustainable you can uh, go through this particular website it is called lensindia.org uh, it's a group uh, of 150 almost 150 universities from all across the globe 
uh, we are funded by the Erasmus Plus uh, program. What we are trying to do is create learning material in sustainability. So we develop lectures, we develop case studies, we also develop research uh, material and everything is uploaded on this website. And anybody and everybody can mm, uh, use all the content available on this website mm, uh, freely. So we, because we are talking about sustainability and we want to bring in greater and greater sustainability, we want to leave all the mm, educational material, all the content that we develop copyleft. So you can go to this website and this website, so this uh, Lens India is the website that uh, the two Indian partners which is IIT Guwahati and uh, Shrishti Institute of Art, Design and Technology, Bangalore, we are um, hosting it. This uh, um, uh, website also has the links to the, um, the local websites hosted by our Brazilian partner, our Chinese partner, our Af South African partners and our Mexican partners and our, of course our uh, um, Italian partners who are the main anchors of this project. In the next lecture what we will discuss is about definition of sustainability and definition of sustainable development. Thank you so much.